Thank you, the organizers, for the opportunity. So I'm a financial economist, so it's um, great to follow Laura, like an economist. Uh, so I'm Sudhir Chava, like uh, I'm a professor of finance, and also like I run an interdisciplinary master's program in quantum computational finance. Uh, so my interest is broadly in how capital markets help, I think, um, assimilate some of these environmental externalities. Uh, I have multiple areas of research. A couple of my colleagues are going to talk about uh, other areas. In our finance group, we have a lot of interest on environment-related uh, factors and uh, how capital markets interact with them, uh, including labor and finance. So one specific thing I want to talk today about is the environmental externalities and cost of capital. Uh, as you can think about any kind of environmental externalities, think about uh, hazardous waste, climate change concerns, many of them, there's multiple ways of dealing with them. One of them is just a regulation, hopefully smart regulation. Uh, the second thing probably might be tax them. Uh, but a third way which uh, I consider in my paper, and I think uh, some of the other researchers have considered is, how can capital markets influence the cost of capital? So the specific setting we look at is both the cost of equity capital and the cost of debt capital. The broad idea is uh, if uh, firms that pollute or uh, have a higher environmental concerns, uh, again, hazardous uh, uh, waste or uh, its climate change concerns, if the capital markets punish them in a way with a higher cost of capital, then this gets influ this influences the decisions that the firm makes. If the firm wants to invest in a particular project, it uh, forecasts the cash flows and uh, for the next five years, 10 years, whatever the life of the project is, and tries to discount the appropriate cost of capital to see whether it's a worth investment in this particular project. But if firms have a higher cost of capital, especially if they're polluting, or they're not taking care of them, they have a higher environmental concerns, then this project, which otherwise would be a positive NPV project, might actually become a negative NPV project and might not be worth investing in. So what we look at is in the equity market, uh, what we find is both in the equity market and debt market, which are the major source of financing. In both cases, uh, I find that uh, when firms have a higher environmental concerns, Again, as I mentioned, climate change concerns, hazardous chemicals, or other kind of environmental concerns, they have a higher cost of capital. So for example, banks charge as much as 20% more for the loans which uh, firms take from that. So the broad idea is, again, because they have a higher cost of capital, this influences uh, the firm decisions. This is one way what's an externality for the firm can actually be incorporated into the firm's decisions. And in a way, markets can help if enough people or, um, care about environment are uh, investors. For example, we know around $12 trillion in the US is tied to the sustainable and uh, socially responsible investing, one out of every four investing dollars. If enough people care about uh, sustainability or sustainable investing, or SRI, ESG, as one names it, then it would have an influence on the cost of capital, and through the cost of capital, the firms can internalize that. So that's one stream of research like which I have done before. Uh, going forward, I'm doing a couple of other projects uh, which um, are related to this one. One of them is, again, looking at uh, the same markets in terms of the capital markets, but thinking about uh, how do firms, their uh, returns vary. So one example is uh, there's a lot of um, funds which, because it's very popular right now, ESG investing, might look into, like, you can actually do this kind of socially responsible investing, but at the same time get a higher return. But theory-wise, it's not possible because you're excluding some stocks. You exclude some stocks but still get a higher return. What we want to take is an alternate track and see if uh, these firms, which have a better environmental profile, are more sustainable firms, they have a lower downside risk. So what we find is in bad states of the world, these firms do less well so that it makes sense for investors to actually hold more of these stocks in their portfolio. In that case, even if the returns of these firms are lower, then it makes sense for any investor to hold more of these stocks in their portfolio. Again, this, I think, can be another explanation why there's so much of money flowing into the socially responsible investment uh, recently. That's one project. And the third project which I'm doing uh, right now is a bit um, related, I think, uh, but it's more like um, is talking the talk or walking the walk. So in the sense, uh, what I'm looking at is uh, all the earnings conference calls of uh, all um, CEOs and corporate managers over the last 20 years. Again, as it has become more fashionable to talk about socially responsible uh, uh, investment or in terms of environment, ESG, uh, there might be a lot of talk. The CEOs or the managers might say that we care about the environment a lot. 
So what we are doing is parsing out all the earnings conference calls, around 40,000 of them over the last 20 years, using some NLP techniques, and then looking at how much they say about environment. But the more important thing is, are they actually following the concrete action? So what we are looking at is looking at going to the plant level with the data, emissions data, or if the CEOs or the top management is talking about uh, a lot about their environmental responsibilities, are they actually following it up with re reduction in emissions? So the broad idea is, is it just talk, or is there actually some kind of uh, action also that's following up? So uh, broadly, like I think all this research is in a way looking at how capital markets can help. As I mentioned, I think there can be regulation, there can be taxes, but the third way is as more investors care about it, whether in the equity market or debt market, some of the firms, it might influence their policies and the projects they take might actually take less of polluting projects to start with, and that would have an impact. That's how environmental externalities can be internalized by the firms. That's a broad idea, and I think a couple of my colleagues are going to talk about some other research uh, we are doing in terms of labor and finance. But thank you for the opportunity. I welcome any uh, like, uh, discussion afterwards.